This is Lime Sark, and in this video we are looking at mechanics and motion in a straight line. So this is displacement time graphs and velocity time graphs. So displacement is a vector which shows the change of position of an object. So for example, if I was to walk 5 meters forward and then 5 meters back and I was in the same position at the end of it, my displacement would be zero. However, distance is a scalar quantity, which refers to how much ground an object has covered during its motion. So if I use the same example of walking 5 metres forward and then 5 metres back, my distance would be 10 metres. So to work out velocity, you do resultant displacement over total time. And then to work out average speed, you do total distance over total time. So the next thing to look at is displacement time graphs. And on the y-axis here, we have displacement, and then on the x-axis, we have time. So if you remember, displacement is a vector which shows the change of position. So therefore, if we start tracing this person's journey, we know that at the start, they are moving forward, and in 10 seconds, they move 10 meters, and that is showing there. Then for the next five seconds, they are remaining stationary. So this straight line here in a displacement time graph shows that they are stationary. In a velocity time graph, this is different and that is what I'll show you next. But for a displacement time graph, this means that it is stationary. Then they start moving backwards and by this point here, so around 17.5, 18 seconds, it shows that displacement is equal to zero. So essentially they are ex back to where they started. But then at the end we can find out here that overall displacement is going to be minus five meters. So therefore if we were to work out the average velocity, which if we remember is resultant displacement over total time, the resultant displacement is minus five. The total time is 20 so therefore it's minus 0.25 meters per second so in this the gradient of an st or a displacement time graph is the velocity so uh, the steeper gradient um, is means that there is a um, higher velocity so for example this is steeper here which means that is going back quicker but this is less steep there so that means that and you should also assume that any changes in velocity are instantaneous which isn't necessarily a hundred percent accurate so now it's time to look at velocity time graphs and this is slightly different to a displacement gra time graph so for example the gradient of a velocity time graph is going to be acceleration so that means that this here the gradient of this is going to be acceleration. So that means that we know that at the start, it is going to be accelerating up to this point here. For, so it's accelerating for 20 seconds. Then it is decelerating here. Now, it's important to know that it is still moving forward though. Now this is because it is above zero here. So although it is decelerating, it is still moving forward. And that is unlike the displacement time graph where it was moving backwards meant that it was moving backwards. So I'll put here a note saying decelerating, but moving forward. At this point here, it means it's starting to move backwards. So this means that the speed is now increasing in the opposite direction. So backwards there. But then the other thing we need to know is what this area between this represents. As if we look at this area, the area between the velocity time graphs and the x-axis is the displacement. So that means that's the displacement for the first 30 seconds. And if you wanted to do 40 seconds, we would add that on. So you work out the area of that, and that is how you get your displacement. 
So now we have a question. And this says that a particle moving in a straight line with speed 5 u meters per second decelerates uniformly for 6 seconds, which reduces its speed to 2 u meters per second. And it maintains the speed for a further 16 seconds before decelerating uniformly to rest in a further 2 seconds. So at the start, it asks us to sketch a velocity time graph for this information. So you have velocity here, we have time here. And we can put at the top here 5u, as that is what it starts on, as you can see them there. We can also put here 2u, as it will reduce its speed to 2u here. And then at the end, we have 0, as it comes to rest here. So if we're sketching a velocity time graph, it starts off by decelerating uniformly for 6 seconds. And that is going to be until it gets to two seconds. So we can put here a line going down until two seconds. And at the bottom, that's in six. Then it says it maintains this speed for a further 16 seconds. Now, if it's staying at a constant speed, that is going to be a straight line. This does not mean it's stationary. It simply means it's going at a constant speed. And this is going for a further 16 seconds. So this is here is going to be 22, because it's 16 plus the 6 seconds we've already got. And then it says before decelerating uniformly to rest in a further 2 seconds. So that means last bit there is come to rest at 24 seconds. So that is our velocity time graph for this information. Then it asks to find an expression for each of the decelerations in terms of u. So we have two accelerations. Now, in most cases, we would maybe put a minus, but as it's already said it's a deceleration, we don't need to put a minus, and we can just say what it would be in terms of an acceleration. So therefore, we know that the first thing, we could do 5u minus 2u. And then that's going to be over 6. That is therefore equal to a half meters per second squared. Now we know that because we're doing the change in velocity over time, as that is how we're going to get this gradient. And as you remember, the gradient of the velocity time graph is the acceleration. Then for the second deceleration, which is this one here, we're going to get 2u minus 0. And I've forgotten here, this is half u, remember. And that shall be over 2. So therefore, that is going to be equal to just u meters per second squared. Again, as I say, as it's deceleration, we don't need to put we don't need to put it minus because it specifically says here deceleration. However, if it did just say find the expression for each of the accelerations, then we would have to show its deceleration by putting a minus there. So finally, for c. It says that given that the total distance is 220 meters, find the value of u. So that means we're going to be able to split this up into three sections. One section is there, one section is there, and then the final section is there. And we need to find the area of each of them, and all the area total together is going to be equal to 220. So therefore, for this, what we've got is 3u times by 6 over 2, that is equal to 9u. For this one here, we have 2u times by 22, that's going to be equal to 44u. And then for this one here, we have 2u times by 2 over 2 that is equal to 2u. So therefore, adding those up together, we're going to say that 55u is equal to 220. Therefore, u is going to be equal to 4. So we've got all that from using our knowledge of velocity time graphs. So the main point that we've learned in today's lesson is that velocity time graphs and displacement time graphs do have many different features and we do have to learn all of those different features. 
So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.